What's on, ladies and gentlemen? My name's Ross, I like games, and today we can look at all of those lovely alternate arts that are coming around in OPO3 Mighty Enemy over in Japan. It is the release date of Mighty Enemy over in Japan right now, and that means a couple of things. It means that the cards are actually in shops and people are showing off a bunch of these secret rares, etc., and that's lovely. But it also means that the official website has gone and updated with all of these lovely alternate arts, which means we've got a good look at all of the alternate arts. I will say in this video, we're not going through the alternate art leaders. We did that the other day, and you know, here's an excuse to show off that wonderful Nami again. Great card. We've done that, ladies and gentlemen. We, we, we've done that video already. There's no point taking time out of this video to really go through that. I will very quickly show you the wanted posters. Here are the ones from the starter deck. Your Luffy, your Don Quixote, your Flamingo, and your Kaido. And then let's just swap in Kid there from Romance Dawn so you can have a look at that one as well. Nice clear images of the wanted posters. I'm still trying to get values for that. Hopefully we're going to talk about value soon. For now, take a look. Enjoy. Jobs are good and so let's just go through the set then in order, looking at those lovely secret rares. And we start off having a little bit of a look at Marco. Shout out to One Piece dash card game dot dev for helping out with the translations for this. I did some myself, but I did check with them because, you know, they're pretty good at this. Alternate art is, of course, on the right. And what we've got here is a red card, five cost, 6,000 power. On your turn, on play. KO up to one of your opponent's characters with 3,000 power or less. And on KO, you can trash an event card from your hand to play this character from the trash rested. So, more of those red things we're seeing in OPO3 where you're manipulating your cards using events, which is pretty gosh darn cool. Now, the other red alternate art is actually one we've seen before. This is the event card. This is your Fire Fist. Yes, it's an alternate art event card. No, I still don't quite know how I feel about it. But what we've got here is a free cost event card. Let's you discard an event from your hand. Again, manipulation through event cards. To KO up to one of your opponent's characters with 5,000 power or less. And up to one of your opponent's characters with 4,000 power or less. Yeah. That's pretty gosh darn good. Oh, and as a trigger, you KO an opponent's character with 5,000 power or less. Frankly, ladies and gentlemen, this is a very, very good thing. Over in green, we got ourselves an alternate art of Gin. And this is kind of cool. Here we've got on play, if your leader has the East Blue type, rest up to two of your opponent's characters that cost four or less. Obviously, you're doing things like resting blockers or resting cars that might be using skills and all of that often blockers, and this is a very cool thing. Also in green, we got ourselves an alternate art of Krieg. Now we got big six cost 7,000 power. On play, you can trash a card from your hand and KO two of your opponent's rested characters that cost four or less. That is a very good skill. It's also got Don X1, this character gains double attack. Although my usual thing here, I'm still not a fan of the phrase double attack because it's one attack that does double damage. I still think we need to rename this. Either way, it is an extremely cool card and I think the double attack plus the KOing on play, I think there's a lot of potential here. Moving over into blue, and we got ourselves an alternate art of Usopp here. Now, this is one we've actually talked about before, but it's a four-cost, 5,000 power with Rush. And Don X1, when this character deals damage to your opponent's life, you may trash seven cards on the top of your deck. Remember that Nami leader I showed you earlier means that you win the game if you run out of cards in your deck rather than lose. That's a big deal, ladies and gentlemen. That's a very big deal. In that deck, Usopp is great. Also in that deck, Zeph is great. Zeph is another really good card for that particular blue milling deck. And it's another one we've actually mentioned before. Five cost, 6,000 power, counter plus 1,000. Dawn X1, when your opponent takes damage to their life through the attacks of this character, you may trash seven cards on the top of your deck, same as Usopp. But on play, you can return a character that costs three or less to your owner's hand and trash the top two cards of your deck. So you've got more milling here, but you don't have rush. 
But you also get to put a free cost character back to your opponent's hand. And that's a really big deal. Because if they've got like one blocker on the board. And you really need to get this attack through. Load Zeph up with Don. Get rid of their only blocker. And have at it ladies and gentlemen. That seems like a pretty good plan to me. I'm kind of loving blue in OPO3. It's making me very very happy. Moving over to purple, we do have ourselves an alternate art of Paulie here. Five cost, 6,000 power. On play, pay two, add up to one Don from your Don deck and set it as active. That's a good skill. Then if you have eight or more Don in play, KO up to one of your opponent's characters with a cost of four or less. So I like that you're adding a Don. But it's kind of weird having a five cost character that really, if you don't have seven Don... Is kind of pointless to play. Because you play it when you got 7 Don. Then you add a Don. Then you got 8. Then you KO. G don't get me wrong. It's still got 6,000 power. That's fine. And you are still adding a Don. That is also fine. These aren't bad skills. But when I'm playing a character. I, I want to get the absolute most use out of it. And with Paulie. You need more than 5 Don. To get the best use out of it. Uh, sorry to any purple players out there. If you're looking for some fancy alternate arts. That, that's what you get in this set. Sorry. Moving on into black, we've got ourselves an alternate art here of Isho. Eight cost 9,000 power. This is a super rare. It is a big deal. Don X1, on your turn, give all of your opponent's characters minus three to their cost. Bearing in mind, black loves taking advantage of reducing cost. And on play, if your opponent has six or more cards in their hand, they must trash two cards from their hand. Now... I'm loving the minus three on the cost. And that's a Don X1 so you can do it all the time. Because you know that Black love taking advantage of having low or zero cost characters. But I do have to point out here that sometimes this is going to be great for hand disruption. And we don't see much hand disruption. So this is awesome. But then by the same token there are going to be plenty of times your opponent doesn't have six or more cards in the hand. So again I'm afraid you're not always going to be getting full value out of this. Now, Kaku is another character here that's getting an uh, alternate art in black. 5 cost, 6,000 power, counter plus 1,000. And on play, you may return two cards with a type including CP from your trash to the bottom of your deck in any order. And KO up to one of your opponent's characters of a cost of three or less. So Kaku, for instance, has type CP9. So anything that's got CP something would totally be in play here. And you get to KO a character. It's another super rare it's another one that's pretty cool. We've also got an alternate art of Khalifa here. Now, 4 cost, 4,000 power, but this is one of your counter plus 2,000, which is a pretty big deal. On play, draw two cards, then trash two cards from your hand, then reduce the cost of up to one of your opponent's characters by two for the turn. So, you're not really gaining cards here, you're, you're kind of... You're cycling cards, as I like to say. But you're seeing more of your deck, and you're reducing cost, which is something Black like to do. This is a very, very, very big deal. Uh, yeah, Black is doing very well with alternate arts. Because we're not actually done yet here, ladies and gentlemen. We've got Spandam. One cost, 2,000 power, counter plus 1,000. On play, look at the top three cards of your deck. Reveal a card with CP in its types other than Spandam and add it to your hand trash the remaining cards so it's another one of those search on play skills that we've seen a lot and we know are very very good and then there's just one more alternate art black card here we've got rob lucci we knew this was coming because it's literally on the cover of the booster pack and what we've got here is six cost seven thousand power on play you may return two cards of a type including cp from your trash to the bottom of your deck in any order and then this character gains Rush for the turn. And Rush is not a skill we see in black very often. It's not the kind of thing we expect. So this is a very, very cool card indeed. I can see this one seeing a lot of love. No, it's not fair that black got so many alternate arts and purple didn't. I'm sorry. Moving over into yellow, I'm afraid it's also um a little bit unfair. It's uh it it it's not it's not quite even, unfortunately, ladies and gentlemen. I can only apologise. But what we've got here is a lovely alternate art of Charlotte Cracker. 4 cost, 5,000 power, counter plus 1,000. Don X1, when you have less life than your opponent, you gain double attack and 1,000 power. 
bearing in mind that yellow manipulate their life. That's what they do. So having less life in your opponent is something you should be able to get going pretty easily. And that's huge. Double attack plus 1,000 power. And also we got a trigger here that lets you discard a card from your hand to play this card. Of course, we know that yellow have more triggers than other types at the moment. You do have to trash a card from your hand, but playing this for free? Yeah, I'm down with that, ladies and gentlemen. That, that seems fine by me. That seems like something I am absolutely willing to do. Now, we also got a lovely alternate art of Charlotte put in here. One cost 2,000 power, counter plus 1,000. And on play, look at the top four cards of your deck. Reveal a Big Mum Pirates card other than Charlotte Puddin or a Sanji, one or the other's fine, and add it to your hand. Place the remaining cards at the bottom of the deck in any order. So once again, we've got that same kind of thing where you're just looking at the top X cards of your deck and finding something. A one-cost card that can let you go and search out a card you want in future turns. That's good. We've seen that see a lot of play already, and that's something we're going to see again in the future. Now, Charlotte Perispero comes in with a lovely alternate art here as well. Free cost, 5,000 power. On KO, look at the top three cards of your deck. Reveal a big Mum Pirates card and add it to your hand. So the same kind of searching skill, but here it is on KO rather than on play or anything like that. And then we've got that trigger where, yes, you have to discard a card from your hand, but you can then play this for free. And again, I, I think this is a pretty cool thing. And then finally, before we get to the secret res, at least, we've got one more alternate art yellow. It's Charlotte Linlin. And why is this so terrifying? Like, I'm I'm sure there's something in the game or, you know, in the um, you know, in, in the One Piece lore that explains why this looks so terrifying. I appreciate how cool and different this artwork is to almost every other One Piece card we've seen so far. But I don't know if I like it, ladies and gentlemen. I don't know if I like it. It is actually worth pointing out, black and yellow do have more alternate arts than other colours. But they've also had fewer sets than other colours. So, you know, worth pointing out. Uh, Charlotte Lin Lin here. You've got your big 10 cost 12,000 power. And on play, if your leader has the big mum pirates type, place a card on the top of your deck at the top or bottom of your life. Then trash a card from your opponent's life. It's a two-life swing. 12,000 power character is huge. And it's a two-life swing. That is huge. It's not the only 12,000 power character we've ever had. Yes, I know that card is a thing. I forgot it in the previous video. I'm sorry. But as much as I might really dislike the alternate art here, I absolutely love absolutely love this card and i think if you're playing yellow yes it's expensive yes it is going to be difficult to get into play but not unlike your 10 cost kaido or oh, if it hits a board you are going to be very 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 happy it did now in terms of secret rares we obviously have a secret rare charlotte katakuri here it's weird but kind of awesome there's a lot going on in this artwork, but I'm kind of loving it. And this is your 8 cost, 8,000 power. And on play, put a character that costs 8 or less to the top or bottom of its owner's life area face up. So you can basically put a character on top of your life so that you firstly have a trigger, which is cool. But secondly, you know, you're getting an extra card on your life, which means you're further away from losing. That seems like a very, very good thing indeed. And then we got Soge King. And we, we kind of know the deal with this one because, well, Soga King. I believe that's how it's pronounced. At least look at the Japanese. Soga King. There we go. Um, yeah, we, we know we got the alternate art. We also know that we got the manga rare. So let's have all three of those on screen at the same time because why not? And as a bit of a side note, some of these cards, it can be a little bit difficult, especially when you're newer to the game to tell. The deal is very simple. The alternate arts don't have the gold borders for secret rares or silver for super rares, but the regular arts do. And then the manga ones, you can tell them quite nicely. So yes, yeah, Soga King here, what have we got? 7 cost, 6,000 power, counter plus 1,000. This card is also called Usopp. And on play, you return a character that costs 6 or less to its owner's hand. Then you draw two, then you trash two. Again, you're not really drawing cards, you're cycling cards. But in that Nami deck we keep mentioning, you want to cycle cards. 
and you're putting a six cost or less character to its owner's hand. Yeah. Not bad, ladies and gentlemen. Not bad at all. So there we go. This is cool. I love this. This honestly makes me absolutely delighted. These are very cool cards. How many of these I will ever own? I don't really know. None of these alternate arts are really standing out to me as absolute, you know, hands down must have cards. I mean, if I had to pick a favorite, it's probably Charlotte Puddin. But I kind of might prefer the regular artwork of Charlotte Puddin. Because I'm, I don't know, maybe it's the huge film nerd in me. And I know I'm not a huge fan of the character, Charlotte Perispero, the artwork on that one is very, very cool as well. Oh, and obviously the Rob Lucci because, and if you've watched these videos for a while, you know what I'm going to say. It's Akira Igawa artwork, which means I absolutely want it. Although, trying to collect Akira Igawa in the One Piece TCG is proving to be a very expensive endeavor. Hey ho, ladies and gentlemen. For now, tell me which of these you like, tell me which ones you're going to be chasing, tell me anything you want to tell me, go nuts in the comment section, but be nice! And then make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, follow me on Twitter at the Wasi. that's where we talk about One Piece and a bunch of other card games, and please do consider checking out patreon.com slash ptcgradio, where you can support the channel, get some bonus pods, join a discord and chat with us, all kinds of fun things. But by far the most important thing as always, look after yourselves till next time, would ya? Thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross, and you've been watching Wassy Plays.